Many people look tzaddikim, but they're far away from being tzaddikim. Far away. On the other hand, this generation is the hardest one we ever had in history. And it's also the easiest one, depending how you look at that. Why it's the hardest? It's the hardest one because there's no modesty anymore, no shame, no integrity, cannot trust anyone anymore, cannot trust anyone. It's big Hilul Hashem every hour on the news, everywhere you go. Newspapers, in internet, against religion, against rabbis, against Hashem, against everyone. Big Hilul Hashem. On the other hand, with the same garbage that we're living in, you can do tremendous things. Same internet that destroyed so many thousands of souls, same internet can save millions of souls. Same Facebook who destroyed thousands of souls can save thousands of souls in days. But people somehow never learn. They did not prepare to the war properly. But it's not only the ordinary people. I claim that the rabbinical authority of this generation did not prepare ahead of time to the war that came upon us, the spiritual war, because they were not aware of the technology. They're sitting in yeshivot, they're holy people, they learn Gemara, they learn Halakha, but they were not aware of the war, the atomic spiritual war that is coming towards the Jewish nation, towards the entire world, but the Jewish nation mainly. And if you're not equipped with the right tools, with the right weapon to go to the war, you sometimes lose the war. Now, finally, they're beginning to realize that if you're not going to prepare the right education for the youth and for the children, we're basically going to lose them. Almost every religious family has one or two or five kids that are off the derech. It's not normal. It cannot be you have five, six, seven, ten kids and 15, 20 percent of every family will go to become secular. That means something is rotten here. Something in a foundation is not right. If you see an epidemic, you have to check the root of the problem. You cannot just give antibiotics to everyone who comes to you. It's not how long it's going to last. You have to find, to locate the source of the problem. If you don't prepare the kids to what, what they're going to have when they be 18, what do you expect from them? They come to the war, they go out to the zoo, they go to work, they have to go to Manhattan, they have to go to Kings Highway, and they're going to see what's happening, and they'll get the shock of their life. You understand? So to tell them, close your eyes and close them in a box for 18 years, hoping that when they become 18, they'll, man they'll be able to handle the challenges of life and think Hashem Ya Azor, everything will work, apparently it doesn't work. And they get the shock of their life. So what I'm saying here is that today, up to one generation ago, we only had to do Kiruv to secular Jews. Religious Jews didn't, know, didn't need Kiruv. What does it mean, Kiruv? Proving the foundation of the Torah. Proving that the Torah is divine. Proving that the Mishnah is divine. Pro proving the level of the Chachamim to to, for people to understand that each rabbi that spoke in the Gemara was not just another holy person, it was a legend. It was someone that we will never find in this generation. All the rabbis in the world combined will not compare to one of them. One of the people that are mentioned in Egmara by the name, like Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Shimon, people don't, ha don't have an understanding who these sages were. That's why, yeah, you know, okay, so Rabbi Akiva say, okay, so Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai say, people don't understand who they deal with, that's why they're not respecting. You know what it's like. One person had a motel, and uh, Rav Saad Yagaon, about a thousand years ago, was a very, very holy rabbi, very big chacham. But there was no internet, no newspaper, no television, so nobody knew how the holy, famous rabbis look. He can stand next to you in a market, you don't know who he is, you don't know this is Rashi, unless if you live in his community. If you came from Germany to France and you came to a religious area, Rashi can come and open the door for you, you don't know it's Rashi. You don't know it's the Magid Miduvna. You don't know it's the Gaon Mivilna. You don't know. Everyone had beard in those days and then and covering their head. It was how to know. So he went to a motel. There was no room. The owner of the motel told him, I'm very sorry, I don't have a room and a bed to give you. It was snowing outside. He said to him, well, I don't mind. You put me in a hallway just that I have a place to sleep. So somehow he arranged a mattress for him and he puts it on the hallway. And he was laying there for two or three days. 
And then one of the people recognized him. One person who passed by said, ah, the biggest rabbi in the world, sleeping like a dog in a hallway. Started to scream in a motel. The owner of the motel almost got a heart attack. <laughs> he tried to do a favor to someone. When he found out that he's the most important person in the generation, he went crazy. What do you see from here? When you don't know who you deal with, you don't respect. When you know who you deal with, every beep he makes, you don't challenge. That's the smartest person in the world. Who am I to challenge? The, the new generation don't understand who these people were. They understand the basketball player, the soccer players, the, the musicians. Every musician who makes five, six movies, everyone stands online, wants his autograph, it's going crazy, this one, that one. We lost our values. On the other hand, every minute you hear on the secular media criticism against the religious people, especially in Israel. Over here is not so much, Baruch Hashem, because over here the Goyim have their own problems. What do they care about the religious community? But in Israel, it's secular against religious. So every, every, mamash, every minute in one of the channels, there's someone smashing the religion or the religious people. So is that good or bad? It's bad, right? It's big Chilul Hashem. But even in this bad, there's something good. Who knows what's good about it? Everything bad, if you try hard, you find a good point in it. What's the good point? Yeah, what's the harm? The religious Jews, they're talking about Torah and religion. i tell you what's the good. The day that the secular people will stop criticizing us in their media, we know we finished our job. We, we lost case already. That's it. As long as they talk against us all the time, that's because they expect us to be better than them. And when we mess up, when they see somebody who did something bad, a thief, a molesting, all these things that you hear on the news, they make a very big deal out of it, ten times more when they catch a secular person who does it. Why? Because from a secular person, they know themselves that, you know, what do you expect him? Not to be a thief. He doesn't have Torah. He lives, everyone tries to steal, as long as you don't get caught. It doesn't excite them so much. Ah, but the religious Jew with the beard and the peot and the black hat got caught? Oh, hypocrite, liars, you're nothing better than us. It makes them feel great. Why? It's all fake. It's all custom. So that's a good sign. That they know that the Torah, if you live by the Torah, you must be a better human being. That's why they criticize us ten times more. And the day that they already got used to us making all these scenes, we know that's it. There's so many cases that they're not excited anymore to speak Lashonara about us. Then we know we finished. As long as they criticize us, that means they expect us to be better. That means we are better. If we mess up, we mess up. But we are better. How we are better? When we stick to the Torah. Without the Torah, we have no choice. 